Welcome, welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Skagla Bones. I'll be your host today. And as you can see here, we have our giant Propel SLR up on the trainer, up on the new giant trainer. Now, it isn't new. I've had it for a few months now, but I've been wanting to use it, uh, test it out a little bit every day, and kind of get an idea how good this trainer is. So, as we've talked in our pre couple of our previous videos, by the way, there you can see it. There is our mag trainer right there. Um, what we mean by mag trainer, it's a magnetic trainer. It's not a fluid trainer. It's not an air trainer. Air trainers have kind of gone, come and gone. They are no longer around. Um, so most trainers, or turbo trainers as we call them, are going to be magnetic, uh, which is adjustable. And you're going to also have fluid trainers, which can as well be adjustable. Uh, if you go with a more expensive one. But for the most part, most of your fluid trainers are going to be auto adjust. Um, but I don't want to put that kind of money out uh, just for the small amount of time that I'm indoors training. And I'm not really concerned about noise level. So I'm going to kind of take you through my setup. I'm going to give you some brief information. You will have, by the way, I will give you a full in-depth review of this giant uh, what is called um, this? Let me go back here and look at it. It is a Cyclotron Mag uh, trainer, and I will give you a full in-depth review of it. Uh, Giant has a couple of different trainers that they have available on their website. Uh, this one I found was uh, very convenient. It only cost around a hundred dollars, and you get uh, quite a decent amount of stuff with it as well. So I'll go through that with you, folks. So as you can see here, we got the Giant Propel up on the trainer itself, up on the block, and we have it set up. So this is the setup that I use pretty much when I am doing the training. I'm gonna move in a little closer here so you guys can see. As you can see, we have an extra cable that actually comes down from the trainer itself. Uh, so any of you who saw the unboxing video will notice that this piece here, it actually unsnaps here. It has a little quick release and it unhooks here. I hook it. It has a number of different um, blocks that fit in between the snap piece, the quick release piece, and the handlebar. So not only does it protect your handlebars, there. In fact, I will take one of them, break it off, so you can kind of see it. It's a little shim. Okay. So for this set of handlebars, for my contact handlebars on my Giant, I use the smallest shims possible um, and even then these are could probably use some smaller ones but uh, I do want some uh, I did want some uh, some small ones there uh, so you put those in those shims go in like so in fact yep. so the shims go up and in like so and then this comes around and like a quick release in some respects. This does have an adjustment knob right here, which allows you to adjust how much you get there. And then you can snap this on. Okay. Now this doesn't need to be super tight. The only the reason for this is this is your mag adjustment. So all the way down here, and what it does is the lower, <clears throat> the less resistance you want, the more it's pulling on the cable here. So it pulls, it pulls on a cable similar to your gear adjustment, and it pulls a cable, comes all the way into the back part of the, the magnet. I'll come down here. So you can see the cable right there. It goes into the magnetic assembly, and then it's uh, the, the pulling of the cable adjust and release tension from the actual magnet assembly itself okay so we'll go back and keep talking about uh, this piece here so as you release or you increase tension well you're releasing tension on the cable you increase tension on the magnet okay so you have low you have gear one gear two gear three gear four gear five and high so you actually have seven different tension levels with this, which is actually really nice. It's more than a lot of them get, and it works really well. 
Okay, so seven different tension levels. And you can make that to feel more like uphill or downhill. However you want to. Low would be almost like a, a negative two degree gradient. You're not going to get something where you feel like you're literally going down a hill. Um, but that will be closest to that. Um, one is about a, I would say, a level. Um, and then up from there. So you're, you're going to, it's, it's, it's almost like going from level one to up to seven degrees up angle um, with this. You're not going to get much more than that. There are some trainers that go into more types of things, and they're more of a treadmill type unit, very expensive, very high end. Okay, everything else on the Giant I keep the same. Uh, as you can see, I don't make any changes. The only, the only thing that I do differently is typically I won't have my water bottles on the bike itself. I'll typically, I'll lay those off to the side on a chair or some other stand that I have available and it's a little bit easier for me to drink fluids as I'm doing my training. Typically I'll drink a lot more fluid when I'm on the bike here than I do when I'm out on the road because I'm doing interval training and I'm, I'm really pushing as much as I can out of myself for the one hour that I'm on the bike here in the house. Okay. Another thing that I have is typically for the most part and it's on the bike right now just because I set it up and I wasn't fiddling with it. I was also making some adjustments to the seat and stuff, so I had my bag here, but typically I'll take this off. Not that it matters, you're not worried about weight or anything like that, but uh, typically I just take it off, it makes less noise. Okay, uh, one of the other things that you want to know, uh, make sure that you do when you're using your mag trainer as well, or any of your, uh, your, your uh, trainers, is the fact that on the back, and this is we're going to go into some adjustments. So I'm going to adjust the camera just a little bit, and we are going to look at the actual trainer itself and making sure that you're setting it up properly. Okay. So. Sorry about the little bit of shakiness. Uh, tripod I got this on it isn't the greatest tripod in the world, but it should do fine for now. So. Uh, we'll get ourselves adjusted here so we can get the entire trainer in view, and then we are going to talk about it. Okay, so the first thing you'll notice here is you have right here, this is an adjustment knob for the actual trainer itself, and this adjustment knob allows you to shift the back wheel um, over this way. It also is to adjust for the tightness and the tension of the wheel here inside. Now if you notice this isn't super super tight in there there is a little bit of play on the bike but that is fine because once you actually sit on the bike it's gonna, the back end will stay pretty steady. If you have it too tight it means you're actually putting too much tension into the trainer itself and you will notice if you put too much tension the actual uh, stanchions here will actually push out a little bit uh, and you're actually bending the metal stanchions. So that's something you do not want to do. Uh, another thing you want to also do is you want to make sure this front leg, this automatically folds up, but you want to make sure that it's folded out all the way. Another thing that you have here um, on the bottom, let's see, just down a little bit, these feet, these will roll, and then they will, uh, you can adjust the height level by a few millimeters or a couple centimeters as you see fit um, to adjust the rear end of the bike. Okay, coming back up to the actual trainer itself. So the other nice thing is too, yes you have this adjustment knob, but as you can see here I can't actually move it because I actually have a locking lug right here and you want to make sure the locking lug is set in place once you get your bike set up for your turbo trainer. Okay, then in order to release this you have a quick release mechanism on the other side and I'm going to hold my bike briefly you raise the quick release mechanism here, it brings out the other side and then your bike can slip out as such coming off the trainer and then you could change out if you're going to be riding um, on the road, you change out your skewer to your original skewer that you had. Now it is possible to buy these, these steel skewers um, that they do sell. They sell these stainless steel skewers, which are the type. Uh, you're always sent with one rear skewer for these trainers just because it's a type that won't get damaged. 
like your, your actual skewers that you have on your bike and, and th the plastic ones will normally get damaged if you were to use them and they don't always fit within the way this hub system is set up or the locking system is set up for the, for the trainer, for the turbo trainer. So you always want to use the provided skewer. But if you don't want to be swapping them out, like I said, you can actually get a set of skewers that are of this make and style and you can just put them on your bike and always leave them there. And that's kind of up to you if you want to do that. If, you're, if you are riding in the house quite a bit. But normally I just I, I change that out as I go and ride outside. Okay, so as you can see here, we're out off the bike. I'm going to lift this up into it. I'm going to put the quick release side into the trainer first. Uh, right there, and then that is going to leave. And I want to make sure that this opening is spun to the right side uh, to allow for the quick release uh, mechanism. And then I clamp down on it using the quick release mechanism on the other side, making sure that it's aligned properly. Now, on the front end of the bike, we're going to switch over to the front end of the bike here quickly. As you can see there, we have what's called a chopping block, okay, or a riser block if you want to call it that. So as you can see here, we take the bike off the riser block, as so, and the bike is going to sit down at a slightly lower angle. Okay, so your riser block, as you can see, this is what the riser block looks like. They have different degrees of rise in it. Uh, so this one here, um, if I was to actually look at the trainer back on the back end, it actually is the exact same amount of height uh, raising that it it um, uh, that is actually is in the trainer, and so that I use this on the front so that I level out the bike and make it perfectly level. Okay? Do you have to use these? Not necessarily. You can just sit your bike here like this. The other problem though is that your front end is going to wiggle like this. It's not going to stay still. I do have another video that I have uploaded on how to actually make one of these out of some heavy styrofoam. And I mean heavy styrofoam, it's kind of like the insulation foam that you get at Home Depot. I talk about how to make one, and you can make one instead of using one of these. But if you don't want a mess, I mean those can be a little messy, um, it can be a pain in the butt. And these run about maybe $10. Um, so you're not saving yourself a whole lot of money by making one. Uh, if you get a single chopping block like this, riser block, these cost ten dollars. That's what I paid for this one. And if you get a one that has multiple uh, spots, so you can actually raise the front end and make it more like you're like this. So it makes it more like you're going up a hill with your resistance. So you feel more like you're going up a hill. Uh, you can use one of those, and they may cost twenty dollars. So always get one of these. Now some. Some mag trainers will come with these, but most will not come with your chopping block. Okay, so I'm going to put that back under there, get it in there. The other nice thing about this one is this block is actually made for mountain bikes as well, so you can use it for that if you want to put your mountain bike on your trainer. So there we go, chopping blocks in place. The other thing is, you notice here I have a pad that's under it. This is to catch any sweat and other things as I'm riding. I prefer not to get sweat all over my floor, and I don't want the bike slipping around as well. Okay. So that's basically the setup. Now to go back to the mag trainer itself, back here in the back, you see one more thing. You actually have the magnetic roller, which is right here. And if you notice, uh, the wheel is slightly off the magnetic roller. I want this to free spin separately from the magnet right now because of the fact that when I'm just sitting this, now if I'm riding on a day-to-day -day basis, it's not a big deal to have that up. The problem is, if you leave your bike sitting on your mag trainer all the time and that's kind of your stowage spot instead of a bike rack or something uh, and you have that the wheel either the magnetic or the fluid wheel sitting up against the wheel you're going to actually get what's called a flat spot on your wheel so if you've ever noticed your car sits in one spot too long and what I mean too long by months and months and months and you get you develop a flat spot on the rubber and then it takes a while for that to work out that's the same deal with with uh, tires and some of your racing tires if you have a higher end quality uh, not so soft racing tire that can actually detriment your tires and your wheels 
So you want to lower this. Yes, your wheel is going to be kind of free spinning in, inside, the, inside the, the trainer, but you want to leave this roller off because the last thing you want is to have constant contact with this wheel when you're not riding it and it will actually ruin the tire. Now, you can get, uh, you can get tires that are made for indoor. They're a very heavy compound, very hard compound. They don't wear out very easily at all. And you can get those and use those because what happens is you're going to wear out the rear wheel quicker, obviously, than you wear out the front. And that's, that happens all the time. So what I do is sometimes when, when I replace my tires, I replace both tires together uh, when, I, when I'm road riding. And then what I do is I keep the front tires and then when I'm riding indoors a lot, I will switch that tire to the rear tire and then I just, and I save that tire, that's that front tire, it's still not worn out hardly at all, and I'll use that for my rear tire uh, for my trainers, okay? And then I just wear those out, okay? So that's what I do. Uh, you can also get tires that you've had to mend or fix. Maybe you've gotten a small puncture or something in it and you've had to fix that tire. You can use that as well for these because you're not putting near as much pressure on the bike because most of your weight is supporting on these skewers here not on the rear end there so the nice thing is the only pressure that's on the tire itself is what you're putting here on the the mag roller okay so like i said there there's a lot of different things you can do i i'm using the gator skin hard shell so these don't wear these wear extremely long so i'm not too worried about a couple an hour a day on the trainer if i'm doing interval train because I'm going to probably put more than that on them during the week anyway so it's not that big of a deal you're not putting that much pressure on some of these tires when you get when you get into some of the harder uh, the harder tires that aren't as soft and uh, you get into like the Continentals it's not really that important to get a dedicated tire now some people will buy a wheel they'll get a separate um, cassette and they'll buy a wheel that's just a training wheel just for their mag trainer I don't necessarily think that that is important. You don't really have to do that, but uh, some people do that. They, they are on their turbo trainer so much, that that's what they do, okay? So that's my setup, that's how you do it. The other difference is now if we want to ride it, I'm gonna take this, this knob at the bottom of the trainer, or a bottom of the magnetic wheel, and I'm gonna turn it, and it's gonna raise this up into the tire and I want it so that there's a tiny little dimple in the tire and that when I spin it, it's now not spinning freely. It takes some pressure, as you can see here, to spin the wheel, okay? And that's how I know it's engaged properly. Now, some trainers, some of the more expensive ones, actually have this little quick release that you adjust the quick release to one spot and you just quickly flip this little knob and it automatically goes up to the right position. I, you don't have to spin it, but I don't see spending an extra $50 to $100 just for that one feature. Okay, so that's how that works. Now, once you've done that, the other thing you want to do is, now I, I use a set of one of my pairs of shoes for my training shoes. Another thing you can do is if it is extremely warm in your house and you don't want to be riding with air conditioning and things like that because that does kind of mess up your, um, I want to say your metabolism, but it, it kind of, um, you, you want your conditions that you're riding on this to be similar to what you're doing riding outdoors. Now the only the only difference is, yes, it may be very hot. For instance, I'm in Guam, I live in Guam, it's extremely warm here, it's extremely humid, except for the fact that when you're riding, as you're riding through the air, you are getting wind flowing over you. So so one of the things that I do is I have this, and we'll come up here, flip over, I got this fan, and I blow that on either the front side of me or the back side and it gives me the feeling of airflow as I am riding on my trainer okay and that makes it very convenient you don't want too much airflow you don't want the air conditioning going things like that because what happens is when you get extremely hot and you cool your body down to to way different temperatures other than what your body is so if you drop your body heat by 10 degrees or more uh, what happens is your body starts to you start to go into shock and that's one of the last things you want when you're doing an intense cardio workout. The last thing you want to do is get heat stroke and you can get heat stroke very very quickly by changing your body temperatures drastically over a short period of time. And that's what will happen is if you're riding your bike and you've got the air conditioning going and it's cold in the room and you're, 
and you're riding your bike and you're sweating but there's no air movement over you uh, you can go into shock very quickly so that's one of the last things you want to do uh, I would almost keep unless unless your house is extremely warm and it's in the hundreds of degrees um, I would try to ride on your turbo trainer without the air conditioning going and that's why I moved kind of here to the living room uh, slash dining room because it's more open I can open a window I can open a couple windows I can open one of my sliding doors and I have air movement through the house the one of the last things you want to think about is what type of clothing you want to wear and now I wear a tri bib uh, simply because and by the way I'm gonna uh, uh, come out on the I'm going to start to raise up on this and we're gonna change the camera angle here real quick folks so one of the other things that I want to do that I'll do is I will wear a tri bib and the reason for that is that way I have an entire set of clothes on um, my arms uh, will be free they'll be open to allow sweat to drip off uh, with the tri bib I will still have a compression short on which is made for riding it is just made for riding shorter periods of time your tri bib is also normally made for swimming uh, it doesn't have the large padding uh, the large chamois in it it has a very tiny chamois but that is perfect for doing sorry about that it's perfect for doing our uh, long training sessions on the saddle so I will normally use that tri bib and I'll be very comfortable one of the other things that normally you can do now if you do a lot of indoor training instead of going with your standard shoes uh, one thing you might want to consider is a pair of triathlon shoes you still want to keep the same type of sole that you use on your normal sessions because you still want that stiffness you still want to be able to feel the stiffness that you have in your normal soles so if you use carbon fiber soles uh, stick with carbon fiber soles uh, one thing you might want to consider though because of the heat and one other thing that I don't do is I typically do not wear my socks when I'm doing my indoor training because I want my feet to stay cool so these type of shoes they're very ventilated these bond triggers and they're not that bad uh, they're easy to wash out uh, but triathlon shoes are made to be worn barefoot and they're made to get wet so uh, Bond Traeger makes a set of triathlon shoes. The only difference is instead of having the ratcheting strap, they're just going to have some Velcro. And if you get a set of those, they cost probably about $100 for some carbon fiber sole ones. Uh, fairly reasonable. And you just get some triathlon shoes. And you can use those for your indoor training sessions. Plus the fact that they are going to uh, not keep the sweat inside the shoe. And it will it'll be a little bit better for your feet. So that's one thing you want to consider as well, is maybe if you do a lot of training indoors, uh, have a set, dedicated set of shoes for indoors. Okay, other than that, that's pretty much the same thing um, that I do for my regular training. Um, I still use my Cat Eye Padrone Smart. The only difference is I do not connect it to the Padrone app or uh, uh, any of my other live uh, apps as I'm riding indoors. I don't see a need to do that. Uh, you could do that if you want to. Um, there is a thing for Strava to do training, indoor training sessions that you can actually link this to Strava. It shows the amount that you've ridden, it shows your miles, it shows your wattage, it shows your calories, it shows everything. It just, you can then mark it and tag it because you're not actually moving anywhere. You can actually mark it and tag it as a training session, an indoor training session. So there is that and you can put your training sessions on Strava or some of your other live apps as well if you want to. So that's pretty much it for me today folks. Uh, make sure that, that if you like this video you give us a thumbs up make sure like always you hit the subscribe button down below we put a nice subscribe button down below so that you can it'll, it'll kick you directly over to the subscribe and you can uh, subscribe to the channel if you like uh, if you really like this uh, make sure you leave a comment as well and um, if you have any questions at all and make sure like always you continue continue to watch and keep riding